Hayo! Welcome, good morning. And we're finishing up 1 Samuel. I hope you enjoyed. Have you enjoyed going through 1 Samuel and trying to pick out nuggets? I, I do this not only to be a blessing, but also that we would learn to read the Bible and meditate on it and try to extrapolate. I love that word. It makes me sound like I went to college. Extrapolate from the text a living lesson for today. It's a historical story. It's a historical narrative. That's what 1 Samuel is. It's not doctrine. It's a story. But what's for us that we can derive and be reminded of? So let's read this. They've come back from recovering everything that was stolen from them, David and his men. He started out with 600. 200 were left behind with the supplies, and they were tired. 400 fought with David. They recovered everything because God was with them. They not only recovered everything, they got the spoils from the Amalekites, God's enemy. That's what that verse means. More than conquerors. We not only win, we get beyond what we could ask or think. Praise God. What a wonderful truth. But now when they come back, troublemakers, evil men among David's 400 that fought, you can fight and win certain battles and still have a bad attitude. So they said, no, we're not giving anything to these other 200 men. They didn't fight with us. So David now corrects them. Verse 23 of chapter 30. David replied, no, my brothers, you must not do that which what the Lord has, you must not, do that with, with what the Lord has given us. He has protected us and delivered into our hands the raiding party that came against us. God's protected us. He delivered into our hands. He gives all the glory to God. Isn't that good? There's a lesson. David fought and won, but he knew that God was behind the fighting, and God gave the victory. When God blesses and we win victories, don't strut. We shouldn't strut. God gave the victory. I know, but we fought. I know, but unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. You win with God. And even when he calls us to be involved in the situation, all the glory goes to God. You know that song we sing here? You sing it probably too. You are, wor he is, you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. Everything comes from God and is for God. You are worthy of it all. All the glory goes to God. Come on. Did you? Wait a minute. Since I've been talking, my heart has beat 60 to 80 times a minute. Yours too. That's more than a once a second. Look. That thing is just going. Look at it. Every heartbeat comes from God. And if he took one or two away, guess what? Muerte. Dead. We should give God glory for we can walk, I can talk, my brain is working somewhat. And he gets all the glory. David gives him the glory. But who will listen to what you say? The share of the man who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to the battle. All will share alike. End of quote. David made this a statute, an ordinance for Israel from that day to this. You get it? They guarded the supplies. They didn't fight, but when they got the plunder, it was all shared equally. Because everybody's important. Everyone has a part to play. I think of all the things I learned in my basketball career and playing sports. You see a guy go up, get a pass, and go up, dunk it backwards or make a difficult layup, and he's fouled, and it counts. Three-point play in basketball. 
But who got the rebound on the other end? Or you wouldn't even have the ball. Oh, that guy got the rebound, boxed out, got the rebound. Now he threw it to the point guard. And the point guard went down the court racing, avoiding people. And he saw the corner of his left eye. This guy was free coming toward the hoop. So he looked one way and passed the other. And now that guy got it and did the play I just described. And the fans only cheer, oh, look, he scored. But people who know the sport know. He didn't do that by himself. The big guy got the rebound. The point guard brought it up, made a good pass. And he made the basket and was found. Everyone's important. So what's the uh, point? Jesus, uh, Paul teaches us we are all members of the body of Christ. Not everyone has the same function. Look, the hand doesn't do what the eye does. This hand cannot see a thing, but this eye cannot grab anything. These fingers can sign something and write something. The eye can't. But I need the eye to see what I'm writing. You get it? We all work together. Don't get hung up with one ministry in the church and make that, oh, I love the way that guy teaches the word. I know, but how about the evangelist? How about the person who prays behind the scenes? How about the person who gives and supports the work of the Lord? We all have a part to play. Immature people just get wrapped up in one function and they make that like it's everything. Oh, that other person's not important. No, everyone's important. Like the body. Can you say to your elbow, elbow, you can't smell and I'm having dinner. I don't need you. Oh, yes, you do. You know, look at that thing. Bringing the food to the mouth. So let's appreciate each other. When you're in church this coming Sunday, thank God for the pastor. Thank God for the deacon. Thank God. And how about your part? Hello. There's a thought. What's your part in the body? No part of the body is described in the New Testament as going to a building on Sunday and sitting for an hour every Sunday. That, and do nothing else. No, that's not mentioned. We all need to hear the word. We all need to worship together. But what's your gift? What's your function? What's the thing you're supposed to do? Go to God today. Don't listen to me. Go to God and say, you saved me for a reason. What's the reason? to make a living and go to the Bahamas once a year? Come on, God's got something more important spiritually that has eternal reward. Let's give ourselves to what God's called us to do. Manana, I will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.